so far in motion as um, extension one, extension two students, we've actually, like the vast majority of motion, maybe 90% of all of the motion you've been looking at has all been one dimensional, as in along a straight line. Okay? Even just think about the motion that you've been doing um, very recently, like resisted motion, say, motion through a medium, you're still thinking about something traveling in a straight line, pretty much. Okay? The only kind of two dimensional motion you've been doing in any kind of detail is, is projectile motion. Very good. You've got um, up, down, and then you've got you know, across that dimension. And those two dimensions, that's, that's the only kind of way we've described, okay, there's an X and a Y, they're both changing. Okay? Today, we're going to move again into two, dimension, two dimensions, only for the second time. And in fact, as you'll see shortly, um, we kind of add a third dimension in as well, but as you'll do the questions, you'll find it's mostly two and a half dimensions. You will see. Okay? Uh, well, it's kind of like an extra dimension which you have to worry about, but not in as much detail as you worry about the other two dimensions. Okay? So, circular motion. In order to describe circular motion, there's one key idea which is extra, which is different, which is, um, you, I asked you to draw a circle, right? Okay, so you've got your circle here. You've got an object that moves in a circular path around a center. Let's call it P for the particle. There's your object. Now, in order to describe the motion of this object, um, you've got one of two choices. Now, you've already got, beautiful, you've already got the tools you have access to now. So for instance, you could say, oh, how quickly is this moving in terms of distance over time? That's speed, right? And you can see it's going to be moving this distance around the circumference of the circle. We'll talk about that in a second. However, as you can imagine, I'm going to put some um, extra bits on this diagram. There we go. When you make, oh, I need one more on the outside, don't I? When you imagine, uh, or rather than imagine, when you remember your line of people, and I use the word line very loosely, when you remember your line of people moving around, the idea, the idea was that you were all moving as a single um, structure, as a single body, right? And so what you've got here is, in a sense, each of the people along here moving at a, like a kind of velocity that should all be the same, okay? Now clearly, it's not, and by experience you know, it's not the same speed, like distance over time that's being covered. For instance, this guy here is covering no distance, right? They're just standing on the spot, having a sweet time laughing at everyone else around them, right? Whereas this guy around here, or, or girl, right, is hiding all the way around, is really legging it to actually make it work for everyone, okay? so. In what way can I describe all of these as moving at the same velocity? And the answer is, if we place in, and you can place it any way you like, if you place in some kind of arbitrary um, fixed radius, right? We'll call this our reference line. We can measure from there an angle, right? So, you got a new color there. If you measure this angle here. We're going to call theta, which can be, it literally can be measured from anywhere, though usually we fix a point um, to say, okay, start measuring from here. We call this angle theta the angular displacement. The angular displacement. Now, displacement is a funny word to use because this angle, it's, it's all staying on the same point, right? So displacement maybe is not the best um, word for it because you, you're always measuring from here, okay? But it's the same idea of something changing which I can measure, right? Which I can physically measure. I can measure an angle, I can use a projector, that's fine. Okay? So I'm going to define theta as angular displacement. And because we're thinking about motion, right? We want to think about how this changes over time. We want to think about how this changes over time. So, <coughs> excuse me, for instance. If I just differentiate with respect to time, just differentiate with respect to time, how is the angular displacement changing as time changes, as time progresses, right? What would be a natural name for this? Radius. We're from displacement, if you differentiate, you should call that velocity, right? So this is angular velocity. I'm going to just leave a bit of a gap, and you should leave one too. Angular velocity. Because you've got something moving in a circle, 
your whole object is rotating. So alternatively to angular velocity, it's also called rotational velocity. Rotational velocity. Okay. Now, because this is such an important idea, right? we have grown, just like with the other kinds of motion, we've grown new ways of um, stating what this is, of actually using notation. So we already have a piece of notation which means differentiate with respect to time, which we borrowed from straight line motion, from projectile motion. What's the particular kind of notation we use for that? A dot, right? So I can call this d theta on dt, or I could call it theta dot, you'll see that as well. But because this is such an important idea, and in fact sometimes it's its own function which you start with, right? we give it a whole new special name, we call it frequently omega. Okay? Um, I, I draw my omega basically like a W, but more round and it comes around, so this is the way I draw my omega. Okay? Uh, yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like um, the way I picture it is it's kind of like the bottom of an apple. Um, so <laughs> it's, like, it's like the Woolies logo, right? So, uh, or yeah, or, or if you've got actual muscles, which I do not. Um, yeah, well, it's, the, it's the Woolies logo now. So omega is what we describe as angular velocity, naturally, because we've got displacement and we've got velocity. You can also have acceleration, right? Um, I, won't, I won't bother writing this because it's the same thing, angular acceleration. But how could I write this? How could I write this? Well... <laughs> Just as a, as a derivative here, right? you could describe it as the second derivative of displacement. Right? I could follow this convention here, theta double dot. Right? How else could I keep going? What other ways could I say this? You, you could say omega dot, I suppose, in theory. However, I've never seen it written like that. I'm not sure why. I guess we're trying to stay in this scheme if you're thinking of dots. You go back to your original thing. You, change, you, you, could, um, you could write this as um, d omega on dt, right? And because this is acceleration just like we've had before, right? You actually have a long string of ways to say this. If you recall this result, um, this guy here. You remember this, right? Now, we had a way of proving we got from here to here using chain rule and a bit of integration a couple of times, right? Now, I want you to think, I'll just leave it as your own task for a minute. How would you get from, just like we went from here to here, how would you get from this to something similar to this and what is it going to be in turn of? You just think about it. You just think about it. It's not that complicated. You do need to be able to um, derive that. It's not a complicated result, but if you can't remember how to do it, I'll show you at the end, okay? So there's a bunch of different ways I can state that, just like there's a bunch of different ways I can state this. Okay. Good morning. Do you, man, do you just want to work or? Okay, no worries. That's fine. Okay. So, can you draw for me another circle? Draw for me another circle. Is that called angular acceleration? This is angular acceleration. Yeah. Okay. Now, I said it's nice to be able to talk about how angles are changing because it doesn't matter how big your circle is, right? You can describe the motion here just in terms of this guy, and this is very, very important and meaningful, okay? However, I hear some of you sort of thinking to yourselves, yeah, but, like, if I was this guy, if I was this guy, the thing in my mind was not that, oh yes, this is changing. We're all changing at the same amount. The thing that was in my mind was, we're all changing at different amounts, and why did I have to be on the end when my group was like eight people large? That's ridiculous, okay? I got feel totally ripped off. So, we distinguish between angular displacement, angular velocity, all that kind of thing, with what I mentioned before about how is your distance changing, your speed, okay? Now, to distinguish between them, um, picture a spot on there, right? And what it's doing is it's moving around, it's moving that distance. Because it's kind of moving in a line, it's kind of moving in a line, we call it linear velocity. Or linear displacement, and therefore linear velocity that goes along with that. And then of course you've got linear acceleration as well. Um, I'm at yeah, I'm on something right now, just to complete. So this guy, this guy is about distance over time, right? Which is 
why sometimes you'll hear this talked about just as speed, because that's what distance over time is. Okay. Now, just like before, the angular velocity is sometimes called rotational velocity, because that's really what's happening. Right? Linear displacement, linear velocity, it also has another name, which comes along from the fact of thinking about the direction that this is headed in each time. Okay? Uh, this guy, for instance, always heading anti-clockwise. No big deal. Or always heading clockwise. The direction does not change. Okay? However, this, this velocity is actually facing in a different direction all the time. Okay? For instance, at this particular moment here, it's facing off in that direction. Right? If you're running, you're running perpendicular to where the rest of the people are. Right? Does that make sense? As you move around, though, that direction changes. It has to keep on changing, like so. Okay? Now, because that direction keeps on changing, in the direction of the tangent to where you are at any given point in time. In addition to calling this linear velocity, this is also often called tangential velocity. In the context of circular motion, these two things are the same idea. Okay, they're the same idea. Um, naturally, you don't have to be moving in a circle, so these two ideas are not always the same, but for our concerns and our purposes, that's what it looks like. Okay.